Oh, baby, it's that time of year again. Time for me to make a fool out of myself. I am back. Another year, another Premier League season, and another year of shocking predictions. Today, I'm going to be predicting the 2022-2023 Premier League season. However, this time around, I feel like I'm going to get it better. Last season, I just threw claims out there that I didn't even know. So, tier list is back, starting with the Champions. Then, who makes it to the Champions League, second to fourth? Europa League, fifth and sixth. Conference League, and the teams that are going to be challenging for Europe. Mid-table, relegation battle, and obviously relegation. I think I'm just going to get it out the way. I think Man City are instantly going to win it. I feel like everyone's saying that City is going to win it, and I too agree. They brought in Haaland and they brought in Calvin Phillips. I honestly didn't see that Calvin Phillips deal materialising at all. Like, I didn't expect that to happen at all. Kind of one day thought that Haaland would join, obviously because of his following history with the club. But bringing in those two specifically strengthened their attack in the midfield. And with the likes of Fernandinho leaving, it's the perfect time for Phillips to join. And because they didn't really use a striker for a lot of the season, Haaland will fit in perfectly. And even with Alvarez, Alvarez, Alvarez getting some experience in Argentina, it'll help his confidence along with Pep's choice to maybe start him over Haaland or maybe give Haaland competition because now they have two strikers, whereas before they kind of only really used Jesus towards the end of the season. But I'm kind of thinking offloading Jesus maybe, his run of form towards the end of the season was unbelievable. And as well as getting rid of him, Sterling, Zinchenko, that may come back to haunt them, but it may not as well because their depth, especially in attack, with like Foden, Grealish, Mares, De Bruyne, if you want to deploy him as a false nine, and Bernardo Silva, like they've got so much in attack, so I think they'll be fine. As of now though, they haven't signed a left back. Zinchenko was their only actual left back. Cancelo is a great player, we all know that, he's so versatile, but he's the only left back now, and he's not a left back, so if he gets injured, they basically have no left back unless they spend it in this window soon. Moving on, um, I think it's obvious again, Liverpool, I am putting second. I'm putting them second and I don't think that they... I'm not sure are they going to be challenging for the title like last season. I'm fairly confident though, with Mane leaving, they will struggle for goals. Especially if Salah basically doesn't return to being Salah, they will without a doubt struggle. And if Nunes as well doesn't hit the ground running, they basically don't really have a striker. Because Firmino's good and all that, but like he doesn't he doesn't start. Mane was deployed as a centre forward for the last bit of the season with Diaz on the left. I guess if the, I guess if Nunes doesn't really do well and doesn't pick up a run of form, they could start Jota, but I guess they kinda need to embrace the long term project that is Nunes. Because he's young, like he's not gonna adapt straight away. It's gonna take a long time. Everyone's arguing about Haaland and Nunes. I agree with people that say that they are going to be very good players eventually. This season a lot of people are saying that they're not going to score like 15 or 20 plus goals. I feel like they will get a bit. I feel like they'll get like 10 plus each but I don't know. I thought that Haaland would adapt to the league quicker than Nunes would. But after watching the Community Shield, I'm recording this the day after the Community Shield. I'm thinking it's the other way around. Because Nunes did make a difference when he came on. Whereas Haaland... <laughs> Yeah. Moving on to third. I didn't initially think that I was going to put them there, but Tottenham Hotspur, I think are going to get third. I think they're going to get Champions League football. I hate Spurs with passion. Like I, do, I don't like them, but you cannot deny that they've probably had one of, if not the best transfer windows this season in the Prem. They've invested in nearly every area, attack, defence, midfield, they brought in Fr Fraser Forster. They already have some world class players in Kane and Son. With Kulisevsky coming through, like it's going to be very difficult for teams to deal with that goal scoring force. And the signings that they brought in only strengthen that, like Perisic and Bazuma really. Spence as well, Spence will be another long term project. But bringing in Richardson for like what, 60 mil? I don't see 60 mil in them. Bringing Longley from Barca, I'm not sure is he the type of centre back you really want. Obviously in the sense that like if you're going looking for a centre back he's probably not your first choice but Conte might see something in him that we don't see so you never know. His tactics will play such a big role in challenging for trophies which I honestly think they can do this season. Like some people labelled Pochettino's Spurs team as probably one of their best teams in recent history. Like we've all seen videos of Spurs pre-season like they're running up and down the pitch in boiling hot heat. Like that will only improve their stamina which will affect how they play in especially the last like 15-20 minutes because they can get burned out and concede a goal that will change the tie. But yeah, if it's a time to challenge for trophies, it's now because they probably got their best manager in recent history. Their squad only looks like they're improving, so. Now here's probably my most controversial prediction. I don't think Chelsea are getting top four. Oh! Who are, you may think? I'm saying Arsenal. 
I genuinely think Arsenal will get top four. At the start of last season, they weren't in a race at all for top four. But they spent a lot of money and they got beaten like their first three games in a row. No one really expected Arsenal to be in, in the top four race last season, but they ended up being in it. Now they did miss out, but with the players they have and the money they spent in strengthening areas like midfield, like attack, Jesus especially, like he has been dangerous in preseason. Like obviously it's it's preseason, so no one really cares. But you can't deny his goal scoring record. Like the service he's getting as well with Saka, Odegaard, like it's pretty hard to deny that they're gonna be very lethal. Who else did they bring in? Zinchenko as well. I think Zinchenko is the perfect signing for them to be around. He wants to play midfield though, so that's kind of the only thing I'm thinking about because he's good as a left back, we all know that. But for Ukraine, he plays centre mid, I think. If he is deployed as a centre mid though, I can't see him being played over Odegaard or even like further back, like with Jacka. I think honestly he should stay as a left back, which he probably doesn't want. But Tierney is never fit for a full season. So, he's also a player that'll fight for the badge. Like, I feel like he'll just settle in and gel well with the rest of the players. So yeah, I think Arsenal are getting top four. That's probably the thing I'm gonna get slated for. But moving on to the Europa League, I'm saying Chelsea are gonna get fifth. They're, I think they're, in my opinion, their overall transfer window hasn't been good. They needed to go into the transfer window and get more midfielders and get better midfielders, to be honest. Because Kante isn't getting any younger and Jorginho isn't getting any better. Yeah, they brought in Sterling, but like, they need more. They need like a recognised goal scorer. Like obviously Lukaku coming in for a hundred, for nearly a hundred million. And yeah, Sterling is a good signing, but more better options are needed up front. And even if you want to play Mount as like a left wing or right wing, like that's great and all, but you kind of need more. You need more essentially. And again, you need a goal scorer. While Havertz is good and I do like him, they they need an out and out goal scorer. Their defence looks strong. Like I cannot deny that. Even though Rudiger and Christensen left. Bringing Koulibaly and putting him alongside Thiago Silva, that's going to be a dangerous combo. But I just feel like more depth is needed. I feel like more experienced depth is needed. Obviously with the new owner settling in, that will be a factor also in bringing in players. I think I said this with Nunez, but if Koulibaly doesn't hit the ground running, they're going to struggle for options at centre-back. As Villaqueta is rumoured to leave, and the only other player that you could deploy centre-back is Chalaba, who is, who is decent, but you need more experience. But I think they will be challenging for Europe. I just don't think I just don't think they'll get Champions League when it comes to the end of the season. Next, I am gonna put United sixth. They are, in my opinion, still the worst off out of the big six. Like they need more signings, especially in the midfield. Like they need a holding midfielder. They have looked good in preseason though. Like Sancho, Rashford, Martial, they're all looking better under Ten Hag. Everyone's eyes is gonna be on Ten Hag though, because if if they don't do well, then they're gonna go straight for him. Especially with the players. The players will throw him under the bus if things go wrong. Another thing with United, Ronaldo will be a big factor in their season, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Because he needs to be playing in Champions League. Also, I don't think he really wants to be at United anymore. While he was good and he was scoring goals, no one else around him was providing him with the service that he requires. I still think they'll do okay, but I just think that the other teams in the big six especially will do better than them. That's purely the reason I put them there. Conference League and the European Challengers. This is where it gets interesting because for Conference League, I have gone for Newcastle United. I feel like this is a big shout as well, but I just think with a full season under Eddie Howe, I think they can challenge for Europe. I honestly do. Like bringing in young signings like Sven Botman, that will hopefully improve their defensive problems. Like Botman is young and I'm using that as an example because he may need time to settle in the league. Like League 1 is very different from the Prem, but I reckon if you partner him with Dan Byrne, who has Premier League experience, I feel like he'll be okay because like he can be guided especially with the likes of older players like Trippier who will be nearer to him in the back four and with Nick Pope being brought in as well that only gives Dubravka challenges for second keeper and the likes of Bruno Guimaraes he only looks to be improving and he looks to want to actively fight for the club in eighth place I'm for now going to hopefully not regret this and put West Ham in eighth I'm obviously going to have the most to say about West Ham because I support them. The main reason I'm putting them eighth is like United, I just feel like the teams around us will do better. I still think we'll have a good season though and push for Europe. I feel like the signings we've made really boost the squad 
Like the squad last season was paper thin. And the amount of games we played, the amount of games, the amount of games the players ran their legs off in, and the amount of important games we ran their legs off in. Like the success we had in the Europa League, like that was great and all. The lack of squad depth really did show because with Ogbonna being injured for a lot of the season, Zuma having his injuries, it really did strain the options at the back. But even though players have left this season, we strengthened in the areas that didn't really need strengthening. Because we brought in a centre back, we brought in Ariola on a permanent, and we brought in another centre midfielder, which weren't necessarily desperate areas to improve. However, I feel like the manager could potentially see those signings, especially as long term replacements, especially for Ogbonna, because Agar, I think, is like 26 or 27. Ogbonna is not getting any younger, so. He will be a good long-term replacement. I think more investment needs to be for like an out and out goal scorer. Like we brought in Gianluca Scamacca from Syria, and he seems to be good. From what I've seen, he's good. But the same with Botman, like he come from a completely different league, and hopefully he can he can hit the ground running because after the start of last season when Antonio came out of that good form, like we really struggled for like an out and out goal scorer. Luckily Bowen was there to score the goals, but we needed someone up top that you can feed the ball through and he'll score. And hopefully Skamaka is the player to rectify that. Okay, next is ninth, and I am gonna put Wolves there. Wolves are a tricky team and I like that because they don't really concede often, but they also don't score too much. They've replaced Roman Saiz who's gone to Pashiktas with mm, don't do this to me. I think it's Nathan Collins. Is it Burnley? Why do I wanna say Burnley? But he's brought them in who I feel like like that won't tarnish their defence at all because they still got Jose Sa, I think and they've still got Conor Cody. But they need key players like Pedro Neto to stay fit, because I'm pretty sure Neto was injured for a lot of the last season, so he missed out, but he's been good in preseason, so. I think they need to invest in midfield though, because while Matinho and Neves are very good and they work well together, they need more options, because if one of them gets injured, you're missing a big key member of the squad. Okay, mid table. This is slightly where I, I one, start to lose interest, and one, and two, slightly don't really know what's going on. Well, compared to the bigger teams, obviously. But 10th, I'm gonna put Aston Villa. Like Newcastle, a full season under their new manager will improve the, the kind of team nature around the squad, because bringing Coutinho especially, like, he will he will really look to make his mark on the league again. And I think additions to the midfield, like Kamara, and with the likes of Jacob Ramsey, John McGinn, like, they look good at the moment. 11th, I'm gonna go with Brighton. Like Wolves, they're a tricky team that some teams kind of struggle to play against. I'll be honest, I don't know who they've signed, but the players are already there, like Kukurea and Lamptey especially. Like, they've been very good. But last season, they were unbelievable for him, so... If they continue the run of form that they were on, like... I can't see why Brighton won't be there, to be honest. Graham Potter, as well, is a very good manager, so... If he keeps it up and brings in even more players like Kukurea and then I've hit the run of form that he has, then they'll they'll do good really. Twelfth, I'm going to say Leicester. I honestly don't know about Leicester. I feel like I'm very tempted to put them lower because they haven't signed anyone yet. As of now, it's 31st of July as I'm, as I'm recording this. They haven't signed anyone yet and Schmeichel is rumoured to leave and if he does, they are screwed because they don't really have a recognised goalkeeper and Schmeichel's good. Schmeichel has kept them in a lot of games and has been a key member of the squad since they've won the league. They do have top quality goal scorers like Vardy, Madison and they have youthful options like Dak and Barnes who will hopefully be long term replacements for Vardy especially who isn't getting any younger but his goal scoring form isn't changing like he's still scoring goals at his age. 13th, I'm gonna put Crystal Palace because I feel like if Vieira keeps what he did last season, like he's done well so far, and I think he's brought in a couple of players, but I don't know who. If he keeps utilizing players like Eze, or Lise, and even Zaha again, they can then like weed the ball forward and then maybe get a shot off or an assist. Because they have a lot of tricky players. They have a lot of tricky players in the midfield especially. But I think they'll do well. I'm excited to watch those players. 14th, I'm gonna say Brentford. They have a good manager with a good style of play. The only worry I have for them is Ericsson leaving because when he got there, he provided the likes of Tony with so many more goals. Like he provided so much assist for them. Some players like Tony may struggle for goals again. Relegation battle. I'm gonna say Everton. See, the ordering always messes me up because I don't know what order to put them in. I'm gonna put Southampton 16th and just, only just staying up again is Leeds. With Everton, I feel like they they don't have enough quality players, especially in defense. Like, like Keane especially is not good enough to play regularly in the Prem. Godfrey is not brilliant. Seamus Coleman isn't really either. Their left back, Mikalenko, isn't bad, but then again, like he's, Again, he isn't bad, 
but he's not the best of the best. I think they need to get the best out of Demary Gray again. But I think, I'll be honest though, I don't think Lampard is a great manager. Can't really see him staying that much longer. Like, yeah, he kept him up, but like... Southampton, I honestly... I honestly don't know how Southampton get, like... Battered, what, is it 8 or 9 nil a season and they still stay up? Well, obviously Broja was brilliant for them that season and Kyle Walker-Peters. Broja is going back to Chelsea. He may not even stay at Chelsea, he could. There's rumours of him coming to West Ham. Like, he did get a lot of goals, but... I feel like their goal scoring record isn't the greatest. I can't, again, I can't really see Hassan Hootel staying too much longer. Now, Leeds. Obviously, last season they were plagued with injuries. Like, they were, they're probably the worst hit with injuries. They have brought in a lot of signings and a lot of highly rated signings, apparently. But they've lost Calvin Phillips and they've lost Rafinha. So, Rafinha was one of the main reasons they stayed up. And Calvin Phillips has always been a key member of the squad. So, I don't know. I think it'll be a tough battle, but I reckon they'll just stay up. I don't really rate Jesse Marsh, to be honest. Like, I don't feel like he's that good of a manager. And lastly, I am going to say Fulham get 18, Nottingham Forest get 19, and Bournemouth get 20th. Fulham, I just feel like go up and down, so we never really know if they're going to stay up or not. Carvalho leaving to Liverpool was obviously a big part. He was obviously a big part of their campaign last season to get them promoted and obviously Mitrovic as well but I feel like he's not like he's a championship striker he balls out in Champions League but not really in the Premier League did I say Champions League? I mean Championship now if people start saying I'm putting Forrest to get relegated because Lingard signed for it you might be right I'm not I'm not salty no in all seriousness I'm not sure do they have enough Premier League quality well, obviously Lingard is a big signing for them and I think he may do well. So I'm gonna, I might switch Fulham and Forest around. Doesn't really help either of their cases, but I just think that's the way it's gonna go. Bournemouth 20th, yeah, again, they don't really have enough Premier League quality. I do like Scott Parker and I think he's a good manager, but I think with the players he has, I think he'll struggle for good results against some of the better teams. So I'm looking at what I'm saying. I think I'm happy with it, which is what I said last season and I got about two right. I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm going more realistic this time, like, last season I waffled a lot. I think this time round, I think I'll be better off. Like, I paid much more attention to other teams this time round. But, there we go. They are my predictions, hopefully I'm right. And hopefully this season is as good as the last one because I just, I wanted to start, I miss football so much. But anyways, we'll leave it at that. Like I said, can't wait for the new season to start. Once again, thanks for watching and I will talk to you all later.